Okay, welcome everybody. Thanks for coming by. This is Chris Petri. We are going to have an exciting time painting this beautiful antique shop. This is located in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, close by to where I live in New Jersey in the USA. Uh, this is called Curtains and Lace, and it's a beautiful uh, antique shop. Uh, we, uh, I visit there um, often, and especially in the uh, spring and in the fall. Great place to uh, just unwind, have a great time. There's all farmlands out there and markets and fresh produce markets and antique shops and places to rest and sightsee and uh, beautiful farms. I take pictures, I paint out there. So I'm just bringing, I'm just trying to bring that wonderful feeling of when I go out there, I'm interested. I paint, I draw, I sketch, I have a great time. So um, this is just the painting. Let's take a look. Um, if you can take a picture of this or do a screen capture with your electronic device or if you can set this up across from you when you work, you, um, if you have a device you can um, put on pause and then you can work from this, that's the best way to go. Or if you can maybe uh, save it, uh, take a picture of it, save it and then print it on a printer and then have a hard copy of it. Uh, in any case, I know everyone's smart and savvy out there, you'll figure a way out to get this. Um, so that you can work from the actual watercolor painting and then you'll also see the photograph too in just a few uh, minutes. So have fun with this. We're going to talk all about having uh, a really good sense of light in this painting with the shadows, um, working with the big forms and shapes first and then working to the details toward the end of the painting. Uh, that's another helpful thing when you see a scene that's got this much information in it. It's often something where a lot of us artists, including myself, we don't want to paint it or draw it because this is too much information, too many details, but I'll show you on this video how you can actually uh, work slowly from uh, larger shapes first and then to your smaller detailed uh, shapes and uh, we'll have a fun time. Okay, see you in just a second. Okay, we've just seen the finished painting. Um, feel free to work from that. I think it's easier if you work from the finished painting than trying to work from this, but it's up to you. If you wanna work from a photograph of the actual scene, that's fine too. Um, I'd Most times I'd rather work from actually watercolor paintings. I do that a lot, but in any case, um, I'm gonna, I have this same photograph on my laptop across from me to the right. So I'm going to draw and paint from my laptop across from me on my art table here, my uh, studio table. And um, this is the um, photograph I'm going to work from, and it's uh, Curtains and Lace um, Antique Shop in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, beautiful Pennsylvania. Um, farmlands everywhere, just a great people out there. Um, wonderful time to relax. Uh, I go there every year with my parents right before Christmas in the fall, October, se September, October, uh, uh, sometimes even November. Depends. But uh, always a great time. We have a great time relaxing out there in the countryside. Um, we visit all the antique shops, the antique stores, the farmers markets. Great place to shop for all kinds of interesting foods and fresh uh, vegetables and things at the end of our trip will we'll load up on some really good produce and things like that f from the beautiful farmlands of New Pennsylvania. And uh, okay, so let's get started. We'll do the drawing now and I'll explain how to just minimize stuff because I know looking at this uh, photograph, um, I know myself, I usually wouldn't want to do this because it's, there's so much detail in it, but I'll, sh I'll just explain how I go about minimizing all the details so that you can actually do a painting drawing and painting like this and have fun at it and not worry about all those details that you see here because that can be overwhelming when you look at something like this and try to uh, think about drawing and painting it. All right, so we'll get started in just a second with the drawing. Okay, we are back and I'm just going to get started now on the drawing. So on a painting uh, like this, again, we were talking about the details of it. So when you see a scene like this, if you're out and you're taking some pictures or if you're even going to sit down and maybe do a, some painting in plain air outdoors uh, in an area like this where there's a lot of antique shops or interesting things that you might like, the thing is uh, with minimizing, it's really, you would, uh, we'll actually go through it here, but we'll just start with the large shapes first. So we'll keep working on the large shapes and the overall um, 
larger design of the painting and drawing. And then as we do that, we'll add in some of the details once we get the larger um, form of the drawing done. Then we'll put in some smaller details. And then we'll start the painting and we'll work into the painting. And then um, we can add in some really fine details with just our brush and paint versus trying to pencil draw everything. So in essence, one of the keys to minimizing and simplifying a scene is drawing less than you see. And then you uh, start working on the painting and then you can do some of the finer details just with your brush and your paint uh, versus trying to pencil draw everything. So in essence, you're going to um, just draw the larger whole uh, of the scene with your pencil drawing and then you can f do some details maybe larger details with your pencil drawing and then the final details you would do with your um, just your brush and your um, your paint a as you're painting so let's start here um, you can use a ruler I'm gonna use a ruler here um, I'm gonna do some hash marks also as well before I start so uh, the sunlight, it's uh, middle middle of the day, maybe, uh, you know, uh, high noon. So the um, light is from the top. And it's... The sun is straight up overhead. A little bit behind us, maybe, but probably more just straight overhead, up top, straight up in the sky over our heads. Um... Much like if you're standing in uh, um, uh, underneath a light fixture in your house and the light is directly above your head, that's uh, the light. The light bulbs. This is what that this would be. Then, so we're just gonna have the insignia of our light, and then we're gonna go and we're gonna look at the picture and we're gonna pretty much do it the way we see the photograph. Um, we might minimize some things. I might not put as much. I might change a few things around, but for the most part, if we broke it into quarters so one quarter two quarters three quarters four quarters um, three quarters would be the um, roof or maybe just a little bit above that roof of the um, curtains and lace uh, antique shop and um, the bottom is the bottom of the building is probably about halfway between the first quarter there so building I'll put building there and we'll say that the um, roof over here so what we'll do is we'll, we'll we don't want to do too much on our hash marks just the basics the bottom of the building the very tippy top of the roof that's good enough there. Then we're going to say, let's look at the bottom of the painting and say, okay, halfway point, we'll do quarters too. So we'll do quarters, one quarter, two quarter, three quarters, four quarters. So um, maybe about halfway, so an eighth, one eighth of the way over starts the uh, building. We can even move it a little bit over this way. building there um, then we're going to go over here and say the the building is about not quite three quarters building so the buildings about this wide here from here to here building then the roof is over here roof um, lower roof LWR so I'll use some abbreviations lower roof here and that should be good now I go through this pretty fast I do um, I've been doing my design like this and, and laying out things for many many years so if it takes you a little bit more time, don't worry about it. Try to try to get these hash marks around on the tape before you start, because that'll really give you a good um, uh, basis for your for your design as you're drawing your your your, your our antique shop here. 
Okay, so let's get started with our drawing. We're going to go up and again, we're going to just transfer our marks up. So the building's here. So we said our building's here and the roof is here. So about there starts the roof and it angles out a little bit. And this is going to be a very light sketch. I just want to kind of start it out, get things uh, going here. All right, and then we're going to have the wall, the end of the building here, the wall. So the roof eaves hang out beyond the edge of the wall. So we have that little overhang there, comes down. Then this roof, this is like a shed roof. We would call that a shed roof, and that runs across the whole lower um, area of the uh, antique shop. So we're going to put that there. And then we're going to have, we say the bottom of the building is here, and it works out good. Yep, that's about the bottom of the building. And then this wall is right straight underneath the same so this is the same line here. So this line comes straight down, right? Like this. Does that make sense? We're just really, this is the actual edge of the building and it's the same all the way up. And then the roofs kind of uh, jut out beyond the, the wall like that. And if I'm really super accurate, I'm gonna actually, this is not quite as far. This just is, doesn't go out quite as much like that. So that's, uh, take your time when you do this layout part here, when you're laying out your um, uh, architectural features of that of the um, antique shop. You know, look at the details. You know, this one is further out. This roof eave is more overhangs here. This one a little less. But, you know, if it's about, uh, you know, close, that's good enough. And then we'll go across here. This is kind of simple. This is one straight line, and it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. If you want to use a ruler, you can do that. I like a little bit of sway in the roof. It's actually, in, in reality, the roofs usually do have a little bit of... It's, uh, you know, been here maybe uh, 75 to 100 years, so it's not going to be perfectly straight. And we said the lower roof is here the building is here so again we transfer our mark up here we have the building here edge of the building so we could even just do a super light line up like that and so our roof's going to go beyond the building line the roof goes quite a bit out then we're going to bring this across again make it wavy don't worry about straightness unless you like straight if you like a lot of straight lines um you go for it use the rulers and use, you know, if you can, you can use the rulers to get perfectly straight lines if you like that look. And then here, the building lines here. And then we're going to transfer this roof here, this line. This goes out pretty far beyond. Like that. So there's a, quite a bit of an overhang on this lower shed roof here. So that you can see is really, here's the building line. This lower roof goes out quite, quite a bit this way. And you can shorten it up or make it longer as you're working and you see that you might need to do that. I'm making it a little bit smaller, a little bit not as far out. There we go. And this is the uh, porch on the front. So this is the porch area here. And then there's some foundation. And there's all kinds of interesting things here. Antiques everywhere. Um, we're just going to make sure we we get our center mark, approximate center line here. That's going to be the center of the door. The door goes all the way up to the roof, almost there. And it comes down like this. And, and then there's some stairs here. And the stairs are pretty wide, so we just do a light sketch there. I'm just kind of getting things planned out, and then what I'll do is I'll go back over this with a darker pencil line so that it's easier to see. But I would leave this just as it is if I was in the field and you know, doing this on location, or if I was just going to paint this on my own for my own purposes or my own just creating a painting for a show or something. I wouldn't really go over this a second time, but I will go over it a second time just so. And sometimes I will go over it a second time just because I want to get some more details in or, or I need to... Um, change some things around. All right, so there we have it. That's the basic structure of everything. It's basically a, a, 
a rectangle here, and then another rectangle up here, and another thinner rectangle here. And that makes up the, the basics of the, of the uh, antique shop. Pretty simple actually, right? Not really too much to it. Then um, we have some other details to work on. Let's do the um, posts. Posts are pretty simple too. There's one here. There's one here. And I'm just looking at it and saying where is the where are the posts in relation to like the door? So the door here, post is here. This next post, I'm gonna change. I'm gonna make it closer to here. So that's where you can change some things around. Don't feel like you always have to do everything exact. And one more post out here. So these are the posts that hold up the roof. And that's pretty good. You know what, let's take a break now. We did a lot of pencil drawing here. Uh, my concentration, I feel like I'm starting to um, lose a little bit of focus. So when, I, when that happens, I stop, I take a break. I'm just gonna take a tip, maybe a five, 10 minute break. We'll come right back, we'll continue doing our drawing. But we have most of the um, basic core structure of what we need to do on this painting. And then we'll just do in some of the windows and um, some of the, uh, like some of the trees in the, in the, on the sides of this uh, antique shop. But this is a great scene and it's coming out really good so far. And I hope you're um, uh, just uh, relaxing, enjoying the, um, the process. And if you have to draw this a few times, on regular uh, printer paper, like office paper first. If you want to draw this a few times on um, printer paper, you get more familiar with it. Then when you get your watercolor paper and you're going to do your painting and you're going to just start drawing on your watercolor paper, you've already done it a couple times on printer paper, maybe with a magic marker or a pencil, whatever, pen, even a pen. But that really sometimes helps a lot if you're still working on your drawing skills. It really helps a lot if you can kind of hash out and do some of this beforehand on a, a scrap paper or you know some printer paper and then this way when you're coming in to do your drawing on your watercolor paper which is your good paper expensive you know more than more than some printer paper you know watercolor paper obviously is expensive and um, you can do it that way and this way you'll be more comfortable with the design the drawing and you can go in and kind of just do it more confidently and not have too many problems where you're erasing and doing things like that okay Let's come back in just a few minutes. Okay, so we're back from a break. We took a break, five, 10 minutes. I'm gonna sharpen my pencil here. <clears throat> okay, so now we're gonna continue with our drawing. We rem uh, remembered um, <clears throat> that we're gonna try to simplify everything on this scene. Again, we see all these details sometimes when, we were out, when we're out, we're looking at uh, some of our photographs we might have taken on vacation or we're outdoors and we want to sit down with our uh, sketchbook or a little pad of uh, watercolor paper and some paints and a little paint bucket and just do a quick little sketch. We see all these t tons of details and we say, uh, how can I do this? Again, this thing is simplify, simplify, simplify. Don't worry. When you see tons of details, just relax, kick back, say, I know how to do this. I know how to simplify this scene. You can do it. So we're gonna do exactly that. We simplified the scene. The first thing we did was we made our hash marks um, really important so that you have a guide as you're drawing to get everything in the, in the proper places. We wouldn't wanna start up here with our roof and then keep drawing and next thing you know, we don't have enough room to put the bottom of the um, porch here where the uh, antiques and thing, you know, all the antiques are and the interesting um, fence here in the front. Although, you know, we could delete the fence if we wanted to, but I think we'll put in the fence here. But in any case, what I'm saying is uh, these hash marks will really help you from going off the uh, beaten track with your drawing. So we got our main um, structure done, our antique shop, two-story um, building, home. It's actually, a, it's actually a house. And now we have a, the door here. Um, there's a um, transom window over top of the door. 
um, then the door has a, so we can do we want to capture some of the details but not every single detail so there we have a door there's a storm door on top of that door then there's a window essentially um, here in the center between the two columns um, basically with some shutters so I'm going to put the shutters there window and I'm not going to worry about getting everything perfect that's good the windows are actually a little bit uh, taller so these might be somewhat tall windows six feet maybe five or six feet tall the windows sometimes windows are maybe four feet high these are a little more maybe about six feet with shutters and then over here and then there's a a um, some uh, <clears throat> some detail over the top of the window that's a, a small um, header over the top of that then here there's a window And then over here, there's a, a double window. I'll start with the shutter, since it's easy to see where the shutter is compared to the column or the end of the wall. So when you're uh, drawing, you can make things easy for yourself and sort of, if you see that the column is here and the shutter is about one width of the shutter over from the column, then that's easier to start there with your window versus starting over here somewhere. Um, but if you see that, you know, so you kind of use, use, uh, this is what I say, and I, and this is how contour drawing is done. We're, we're not really doing contour drawing so much here. We're sort of, it's a form of contour drawing, but it's really, I'm taking my time and making sure I'm getting everything correctly, uh, um, dr I'm drawing everything correctly to scale for, for the most part. These windows are even taller yet. And as, as I look at that, this window is a double window, so... And then a shutter over here. And there's some moldings on the bottom of this window here. And you don't have to get so much detail. I'm kind of just trying to get it somewhat the way we see it in the picture. And uh, there's no shutters actually on this window. Okay, so we have the we have the windows completed, the door, so we're good on that. Let's move up here. Directly over the top of the door is the window up above here. That window goes right down to the roof area, all the way up, and it almost reaches the underside of the roof. Like that, good. And shutters. Same thing with this window above here is in line with this. So if you want to line things up, you can do that. You can, um, again, you can use a ruler or even a pencil. We'll just keep keep drawing here. We'll get our lines up here. One there. That's actually a double, so this is only a single wide window. And it's pretty much centered on this. So I'm just gonna
And if you have a line that kind of, you could just do a little bit of racing here and there. Okay, so now we have all our windows done on the second floor. All of our windows and doors done on the first floor. Um, so you can see now we're, we're getting the main features here. And then we're going to maybe do a few details as well. But before we do any more details, we're going to try to um, capture a few more things on the side here. So of the, the right side here of the drawing, let's do the, um, there's a, a bush over here. Let's get that. So I just very loosely put in the bush there. And it goes down like this. And then the fence, the fence top of the fence starts at the bottom of the stairs. So the fence starts here, and it goes there. I'm gonna sp I'm gonna make the fence stop here, so that we feel like we can walk through over here. And then the fence also stops here, and stops there, and goes this way. And I'm gonna st make a point here where I stop the fence here. So that again we can feel we can feel like we can kind of go into the into the scene more around the fence here. So I'm going to pretend that I that the fence uh, stops there, and the porch is here, and then there's all kinds of interesting things. So again. I'll just make a note here like that with some lines just to kind of so I know that this is where my fence is. Looks good. Then um, there's a gazebo over here. What's good about this gazebo is it gives us a little of um, it's going to make a, a feel of There's something in the distance that's sort of kind of helping our eye to see the, the three-dimensional feel of the buildings and the scene. So this is a gazebo here. And I'm not sure. I'll make some lines over here. Then behind this gazebo is a tree. And what I'll try to do is I'm going to try to carefully get the basic feel of this tree. Uh, if you find you, you can always erase a few lines on, a, on this tree if you think it's not going perfect. And then I'm going to try to just keep my eye on the so I'm really looking at the um, I'm looking at the photograph. I'm not going to be exact with everything, but I'm going to try to get it pretty close. And up here it trails off a little bit that way, like that. Another there, another branch there. It's a little bit wider here. And there's another thicker branch here. That looks pretty good. So I wanted to get that tree in. Then there's another building over here. And I will try to capture that too as well. And I think what really th this helps to give the um, the painting a three-dimensional feel, because now we're kind of having that feel like there's something 
there's a There's this building down over here. That looks really good. There's a shadow there. And this is the one shadow. Okay, so the right side of the scene looks good. There's some hills in the background here. This is the farmlands in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. This is a farm in the distance here with some distant hills. So I'm gonna put those in. I won't get more detailed than just some rolling hills and some trees in the distance. And this is a grass field here. This is actually a, um, some crops here. It looks like a corn field maybe here. So we're gonna have that in the in the scene. Let's take another break. Uh, we've done a lot of drawing again. We've done all the windows and doors, the tree, this gazebo, and this other distant building over here. If you need to take more breaks, or if you want to kind of, again here, simplifying a scene. If you want to simplify, there's not a problem if you leave out the gazebo and this other structure here, and maybe just put in this tree and um, and that, that would be fine in a couple bushes, maybe smaller bushes down here by this tree. So you can still get the feel of distance here and three-dimensional uh, steps going through the painting uh, toward the back of the painting, the distant part of the painting. So you can still get all that feel without doing the gazebo and this building. I felt like doing this, but if, if it's more... Uh, Simple for you. You want to keep it more simple. That's fine. You, you can delete out the gazebo in this house Here there's another structure another um, This is another uh, antique shop actually next door to this So we can uh, I want to keep this accurate to the scene So I'm gonna do for accuracy, I'm going to do this. And then approximately here, the building ends here. Like that. And there's like, <clears throat> looks like this may be like a sidewalk over here and some grass. And we might do, we'll do another, we'll do another tree over here. And that looks fine. That, that looks pretty good. We have a good likeness of the actual scene. And again, you wouldn't, maybe you can also delete the um, building on this side, the left side, if you're doing this painting and you want to keep it more simple. Again, I'm trying to go with my photograph and try to keep it pretty much exact, but, but, but that's not necessary. Let's take a break. We've done a lot of drawing so far here. And um, we'll come back and start the painting. Okay, we're back. Perfect timing. I just wanted to say, everyone, if you're enjoying my videos, uh, please give a thumbs up. 
uh, also too, subscribe if you haven't. Um, consider that. Um, this way you can uh, be alerted when um, our new videos come out. Uh, once a week we create new videos just like this. Drawing, painting, and watercolors. Everything watercolors. Um, you can also hit the notification bell and that will let you know exactly when uh, the video comes out. You'll get an alert. And uh, let's keep going here. Um, we're almost ready to start painting and uh, everyone's excited. I always, uh, something new I've done in my videos is I'll, in the beginning, uh, actually when you uh, open up uh, this video and you see, you start the video, there is a description below the video. I'll put in the video what time I start my painting um, and what time I start my, uh, at what time I start my drawing, my pencil drawing. This way if you're going to come back in a second time or if you're actually working on your painting and you stop for a couple days and then you come back and you want to know where things started. So I realize that might be a help to everyone. So that's what I'm going to start doing from now on. I'm just picking up a few new things to do that are going to help everybody out um, in regards to working along uh, the video. You know, when you're working with the video and maybe you're starting and stopping or you start a video and then maybe you come back a week later if you get caught up and you're doing some things and you're, you're, you're going to come back in and start working again. So I'm going to keep doing uh, that. Make sure that I um, put those uh, time stamps in the uh, description of the video, in the beginning of the video. And um, okay, so what he, I'm going to do here is just, I'm going to put those windows in this building over here. This is important to get these in. And there's another window here. And then there's another. There's a double window up here. Okay, I just wanted to get those uh, those windows in, and they so you can kind of see how these windows are on an angle this way, the bottom of the windows. So that's just a bit of perspective there. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll I'll just look at the photograph and maybe put my pencil up. Uh, I'll put the, my pencil on my laptop and, and put it up against the screen of my laptop to get the angle. So I kind of look at it and go, okay, that's the angle. So I'll put the pencil on my laptop and then just bring the pencil over and do this so that it's the same angle. And then I get my angle on the windows there, like that. Because that's difficult. That's a difficult angle. I would think it would go this way. But it's actually this way here, like this. Okay, let's get started with our painting. This is the fun part. We have a real fun time doing this. This is, um, I'm just going to start out with a number six, uh, Raphael brush, round brush. And uh, let's, let's start out with the roofs. The roofs are pretty large, and we want to make sure we make them, um, they're a grayish color, so brown, um, cerulean blue, Burnt umber, maybe a little bit of um, cobalt blue, a little bit of purple. So if we, we'll start out and say, okay, this is kind of the color we want to, a little bit of lizard and crimson. These are the colors we want to use for the roof, kind of a mixture of different colors, and we want to sort of... Uh, Sort of mix these all up as we go. So I'm just going to start on this side over here, left. I'm a right-handed person, so when I'm watercolor painting, it's easier to start from the left and work to the right. So I'm not leaning into my paint. Uh, paint. And I want to make sure there's tons of variation on this roof. So now I just... And 
And once this paint dries, you're going to notice that it really, you'll see some of these colors that we have mixed in, which is good. And I always remember there's a lot of cerulean blue though. Cerulean blue is the main color I think I'm going to use. And this will dry a lot lighter. And I'll splash a little bit. I try to move my brush around different ways. And I know some of you are going to say, oh, I don't see all those colors in the photograph. Don't worry about that. Don't worry. <laughs> Add lots of color to your, to your washes. That'll make them look so much better. I know some of you are going to definitely be tempted to just say, well, that, Chris, that's only two colors. I see blue and maybe some brown. But if you add in these extra colors, this lizard and crimson, and the, you know, cobalt blue a little bit. And the brown, I think you'll, you'll see that it really is going to look much better. More interesting. And um, let's do the lower roof. And what we'll do is we'll probably, uh, my laptop just, uh, screen just went dark. I'm going to see if I can... Rezoom in that. There we go. Okay, so now the lower roof is a metal roof and the upper roof is a shingle roof. I'm not going to try to, I'm going to keep them both the same. That, that would be really a problem. I would consider that an issue where if you thought to yourself, oh, well, the bottom roof has lines in it and it's shiny, um, that's it's a steel, it's a, a metal roof. And then the upper roof, so shingle roof, I'm going to keep the lower roof just like this one. Same colors. That will look much better. That's where you take your liberty as an artist and... Everything is subordinate to the artwork and the overall look of the painting versus trying to uh, keep things accurate. And we're having lots of fun here, aren't we? Look at this. This is just mixing colors. It looks a little bit... Again, I'll always say this. You'll hear me say this all the time. You'll hear great artists say this all the time. You can't judge a watercolor when you're in the middle of painting it. It always will look 
uh, less finished and it will look um, at times uh, haphazard. But once everything's all painted and then 90% com complete, then you see the the beauty of the way the watercolor will look. So never get discouraged in the middle of a watercolor painting, no matter what goes wrong. You just keep going forward and finish it all the way to the, f unless it goes so horrible, then you just take it, put it to the side and start another one. But most times you, you will definitely notice that you have to really finish the whole painting before you can really look at it and say it didn't come out good. So always remember, finish it out. Just Just go for it, keep going. If something goes wrong, don't worry about it. Just keep going forward, keep to your plan. We're gonna do the large areas here. The roofs are done now, complete 100%. We'll take a break. Perfect time to take a break. We did the washes on the roofs, the upper roof, the lower shed roof here. Perfect, let's leave it at that. We'll take a break. I might even wait till tomorrow to come back and finish this painting. Um, or I might work on it a little more. Um, so, but you can do that too as well. Watercolor is great that way. You can let it sit, come back the next day and start working again and everything is fine. Okay, let's, I'll be right back. Okay, we're back again and we're gonna start back up. Uh, I took about a 10 minute break here and uh, we're gonna continue. Um, so, I just wanted to mention this quickly, um, as we're painting, you can change around the colors of this scene if you want. Now, since I go out to Lancaster, Pennsylvania a lot, I want to kind of keep it, you know, true to the scene. But, you know, it may, it may be that you just, you'd want to change the color of the building. You might like to make it like a yellow or a tan color or maybe a blue. So, um, you know, it's a, like, kind of like a barn red. Like, you know, like that kind of that medium red color, barn red, you know, with the brownish red color. So I'm going to stick to that, but you can change the color too. The only thing when you change color, you just have to re remember that, you know, your shadows might, um, the, the tonal values of your shadow might change a little bit. So some shadows might become lighter or darker. Um, so with a darker color building, your shadows, let's say, underneath the eaves of this roof, they're going to be darker because the shadow is uh, is um, uh, is cast upon the darker color of the building. So that'll make it a darker looking shadow. If you have a lighter uh, color building, like the lighter color siding, the shadow might be lighter underneath the eaves of, of the roof because it's a lighter siding so you might if you have trouble with your shadow getting your shadows correct you might look at some um, watercolor uh, pictures online or even some just pictures online you know you type in maybe something like uh, a yellow house and then you you know the photographs might come up of a yellow house and you'll see sunlight and you'll see a house that's in sunlight with shadows on a, on a yellow color paint on the, on the building. And that's how you can figure out shadows sometimes. I do that. Sometimes I do that. If I change something around in a painting, I'll go and research if I think I'm going to have a problem with something like that, like the shadows being too light or too dark. So I want to try to keep it pretty accurate or so it doesn't look uh, too awkward. Um, so we're going to start back up here. Now the siding is a brownish red so let's mix up some reds brown cadmium red so I'll mix up all my reds here cadmium red alizarin crimson brown and burnt sienna that gives us plenty of interesting and then a little bit of purple and blue cobalt blue and purple just to have a little variation some warm and cool everywhere. I'll put my shadows in later, actually.
but I will add some warm and cool to the paint. Okay. And if you go over a spot, don't worry about it. Water calls a water calls a fun medium. No no reason to fret over minor things because when we look at a painting, we look at the whole painting as a whole. We don't focus in on one area of the painting and see something that uh, looks funny, awkward, whatever. I left out some details on this. There I went over the shutter a little bit. I've been working a long time on this. Now you're going to see me make some problems, some mistakes here because I'm working and working. This is when I should have just stopped for the night and picked up tomorrow, but nope. I'm going to keep going and this is what happens. You'll see me having problems with some things, but it is what it is. And we carry on and keep moving ahead here, and... I'll come back later with some white paint and just touch that up a little bit. And we'll keep going. Let's now here's where we have to be on our toes. We have to paint this column in, so we paint around the column. Negative shape painting, as they call it. Let's do that. So we leave that column white there. Let's mix up some more variation. Cadmium red, alizarin crimson, burnt sienna, burnt umber, a little bit of purple, and a little bit of cobalt blue. And this is Fabriano paper. Now, what I didn't mention here is if you start to see some things you want to paint around, this is your time will do it. So, This is pretty good here. I'll paint around this column and window. And I'll just leave some spaces around the, uh, here and there, I'm going to leave some white paper. And what that'll do is, that'll, that'll leave us some places to put interesting like antiques and things. There's quite a bit of antiques in the uh, in this scene. Okay, now 
I'm going to try to get that sign. That is... It's the open sign. Here again we're painting a negative shape painting, so I see some shapes in here that are some chairs and tables. So I'll capture that by do, doing some fine lines. Then over here there's a chair. I'll try to paint around that chair. Okay, so we uh, we got the we got the majority of all of our paint on the uh, the building, the red uh, barn red barn paint. Looks pretty good. Um, And remember, some of the some of the um, antiques that you see on the porch and in the front yard and in the on the lawn here, you can just you know paint around them. Sort of some mystery shapes here and there. I'll take some sap green, raw umber, and I'll just do a little bit of. Some of this shrub here will splash a little bit. A little bit of shadowing. And I'll do some shadowing raw umber and some cobalt blue just to give it a little darker. Okay, so we did quite a bit of painting. I think it's probably good to uh, take another break at this point. So um, we did the roofs first, we took a break. Then we did this red um, wood facade. It's a clap, clapboard, uh, clapboard uh, siding, red, barn red clapboard siding. We're gonna leave this. Um, just as it is now. We'll let this dry a little bit and it's actually pretty dry in most places. But we'll actually let this dry a little more and we'll come back. So we'll take a break because we're, this is a kind of painting, let's take lots of breaks because a lot of details. If it's some, um, if we're just really throwing the paint on and it's more of a simple like seascape or we're just doing tons of water, um, if we're doing a landscape and we're just doing tons of like trees and fields, you know, that's, you can go you can, you know, work on those, and you might not have to take as many breaks, but on a painting like this, since there's so much detail going on, let's take plenty of breaks. So we'll stick to our game plan, plenty of breaks. Roofs, take a break. Paint the uh, building, facade. Red, barn red. Lots of mixes of color. We'll take a break, and we'll come back, and we'll continue working on, uh, maybe we'll work on this over here, this uh, building over here on the side. The... Uh, 
building that's uh, right alongside this uh, an beautiful antique shop. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, we're picking up from yesterday. Uh, sometimes um, you'll find that if you're working on a painting and, it, and it's there's a lot of details and it's taken you maybe more than you time than you expected, that's not a problem. Um, I sometimes will, you know, leave off a painting many times, you know, start uh, start a painting and then, you know, pick back up the next day or a couple days later. Sometimes I'll have a painting, a watercolor painting, especially a larger painting, maybe like a uh, like a 20 by 30 watercolor painting. Uh, it might take me like a week to do um, where I just take my time and I do a little work on it each day or each night. Um, so um, totally up to you how you uh, bracket your time on your watercolor uh, painting. This is like an 8 by 10 painting. So this is more or less, uh, we worked on it quite a bit already and we're just going to continue on here. And we've got most, you know, we've got a lot done so far actually. The, but, you know, the drawing takes, you know, a lot of time, which we did do. The drawing, we took our time, we laid everything out, we had hash marks all around. And as you can see now, we're picking back up. I put fresh tape on. It looks a little better on camera here when we're doing a video to uh, remove the hash marks, but you only need the hash marks really when you start. So even if it bothers you when you're painting, having the hash marks on your uh, tape, you can just, you know, retape your your uh, painting once you have your drawing completed. And uh, we'll, we'll continue on here. So I have uh, a number eight uh, Raphael brush round actually number six and we'll continue on with this building over here and this is next door to the uh, curtains and lace country antique store we're having a wonderful time here we're I'm thinking back to when I was out here visiting and doing sightseeing and shopping and just enjoying taking in the great uh, relaxation of being out in the farmlands of New, of uh, Pennsylvania so maybe I will add a little blue and some viridian just to maybe tone down this over here a little bit the red so the main uh, antique store here that's that's the focal point and then we're going to tone down the the, color, the intensity of the red a little bit over here. So I'll just add in some green and and I'm I'm actually painting around the uh, the post here. There's a one more post. here on the uh, antique store and I think I will leave out some shapes here So that um, I'm much doing the same as here, leaving out some white paper so that I can put maybe a couple, um, maybe some antique items along here. And over here too as well. And what's nice, we left this space in between the two buildings. We can put some, we're going to take this um, field and distant mountain rolling mountain range and we're going to transfer it all the way over to here and we'll put it into this small uh, window of uh, space between these two buildings and that's going to give a good feeling of like um, uh, uh, the, the, it's, it's, it's going to breathe the painting's going to feel like you can kind of see through the scene a little bit if we were just to paint a big 
block of building here and have nothing um, that we can see behind it, it's going to limit the excitement of the painting, actually. So let's try to think about that. Does that make sense? If we can get a little bit of um, distance in this scene, that's going to give us that feeling of depth. So I'm always looking for that type of um, opportunity in a painting to try to do this. Sometimes it's not possible, but I did create it here a little bit on this side. The photograph really didn't have this opening between the two buildings, but it did have it over here. So I'm going to try to invent my own things, my own design ideas as I go. And that really is helpful to do. some sap green that tends to grate gray down a little bit and I'll take some of that red wash <clears throat> and uh, sort of that tree is lighter but if I bring in a little bit of that if I tie that in just a little bit and bring some of the wash, not all of it, some of it over into this uh, tree here, that looks good. And we're going to go in and we'll do some of that roof, blue, burnt umber. And I think the... Uh, Since this over here is, um, it's not really the main uh, subject matter in the painting, it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so we really we took, you know, took some time. We, we put this uh, building over here. Um, I'm moving around the painting. We'll have to go back in and do some of the window details, but we'll, we'll let that go for now. I think what happens is uh, if we can get these, if we can get the main idea of the painting again with the, with a painting like this, where there's tons of detail, let's block in the main subject matter again. I'm just repeating myself, but it, it's it bears, you know, repeating. We're going to block in the main subject matter and then we'll go back in and we'll start working on the details and then we'll we'll see how the details look as we start putting those in um, once we've done the main portions of uh, the painting. So let's go over here. We'll do this building over here. Um, brown. This one's a little darker. So we're going to add some blue to that. 
So that was some French ultramarine blue. It's in shadow. I'll get some red in there too, just to uh, make sure we get that. Uh, purple. Brown. Blue. So we're making some darker mixes here. Not the main focus of the painting, so as long as, long as we capture the overall feel of this, we should be good. a needlepoint brush, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, and some of that red. And I'm just going to do the uh, the posts here and some of the details along here on this uh, and we have this over here. And then already I'm starting to see some of that burnt umber, uh, raw umber, raw sienna, uh, a little bit of that brown, and some green. And that's going to give us that feel of seeing some of the the distant uh, colors. We'll put the roof color on. For the gazebo. And now we're tying everything together. raw umber and some cerulean blue for this tree here, so. That makes a good effect, tie tying things together. We'll put in some shadowing.
And now's about a time for a break. We're going to come in and do some shadowing too. This is a lot of fun because when you use this type of uh, technique of really just working on the painting in glazings, um, it really uh, it gives you a chance to really get the feel for like um, the shadowing, the light. So we have some good light in this picture. The light is shining on the front. You know, it's the, the light's coming from the top down, but it's it is shining on the front of this scene here in the you know on the face of this building here, this uh, antique shop. And then you'll see once we start getting most everything completed, then we'll we'll go in and do our shadows and some of our details. But you'll see when we do the shadows, the light will be much more interesting in the picture. So w if we're working in glazings like this and doing steps at a time, you'll learn you'll learn the whole process of really like. Um, light and shadow um, and as well as you know tying together these lost and found edges are right here so this is a great way to learn lost and found edges this roof here is similar in value tonal value to this roof over here so we crossed over and we didn't worry about making any lines or borders on these two roofs because they're pretty much the same tonal value maybe in the painting it's a little different but I wanted to make this uh, tie in over here so these two roofs are tied together and just sort of blend together. That gives a nice feeling of um, three-dimensional quality. And the same here with the tree, blending some of the colors of the front of the, or the side of this building into the tree gives us that feeling of, uh, you know, uh, tying things together, three-dimensional uh, qualities. And the same thing over here with some of these washes washing in and mingling with the others and then again we'll see as we do this uh, shadowing on the building and underneath the eaves of the roof and here we did a nice shadow so already we're getting that nice feeling of dark shadowing along the side of this building and we notice that along here the shadow is a little lighter so I just wet that a little dab it we could add some purple wash to this and okay so we'll come back we'll take a break now um, we'll let this dry some of these washes over here dry and we'll come back and we'll keep working and um, we should really be close to finishing up in the next you know 10 20 minutes, we, we should have everything good. Okay, we took our break. We're doing fine. Uh, I'm gonna continue here. I started a little bit over here while we were away. This is good. I could not wait to get back started again. So I started going in here and forgot to turn the camera on. So I'm putting in some of those distant fields and already we're feeling that, that really nice feeling of depth in the painting. We've got some of these distant fields here. Some of that raw umber. I mixed everything. Uh, some of the um, sap green, cadmium lemon yellow and sap green. Especially some of that cadmium lemon yellow here kind of gives it that bright lit feeling. So now we're seeing out into the distance. We'll put some bluish purple mountains in in this uh, distant area here. Once this all dries, I don't want to mix uh, mix that in right now and put that in the um, purple and blue mountains. 
I see that our um, paints are, we've been mixing a lot. Let's practice good habits here. Let's make sure we wash up, uh, clean our palettes here and get that paint off. And we, we know what colors we're using already. If you, for some reason, if you're newer to watercolors, it would help if sometimes you might um, write down the colors you're using for the painting. Once you get used to your colors and you use the same colors over and over and over again, you, you can just look at your palette and, you, and you'll see all the colors in the palette and you'll know which ones you're using at all times so you really won't have to worry about that. But if you're sort of newer and you haven't memorized your colors yet completely, you can always just write it down on a piece of paper and say we're using, you know, cad red, alizarin, crimson, burnt sienna for the building. And uh, for the roof, we're using uh, cerulean blue, burnt umber. Um, we're using some alizarin crimson in the roof as well. And a little bit of uh, raw sienna and raw umber in the roofs as well. Uh, um, in these washes so you can kind of see <clears throat> as you're working in your painting you can also identify the colors on the on the paper so you can look at your paper and go oh that's right I used alizarin crimson there and I used cerulean blue here I see that cerulean blue some cobalt blue some cobalt blue purple we use some purple ultramarine violet here some uh, burnt umber and some raw umber here so you'll kind of start to see all the colors and you can um, get back and put the stuff out onto the palette that you need to you'll know what you're using okay so we're already completed with the roof so we don't have to worry about that but I was just using that as an example um, we're gonna uh, keep working here uh, let's see what we have it's always good Raw umber, maybe a little cerulean blue. Raw umber, cerulean blue. I might just do a little. Uh, splashing can add a little bit of interest. and a little bit of color too. So if I take a little bit of the cadmium lemon yellow, maybe a touch of orange, that can give a feeling of warmth over here. And I'm gonna empty my water and get fresh water. So I'm just filling up uh, my water, my water pail. I'm using a large water water pail here. So I just uh, got fresh water for that. And uh, let's continue here. So let's see. Um, the best thing to do is to work this area in here in between the fence and the building and try to just get some details in there if we can. Um, We'll also work on some burnt umber, cerulean blue. I'll put some uh, we'll do the steps here on the front, so that's real simple. I leave some white space on the between the steps. And then we can use some uh, burnt umber, serene blue. We'll use more of that similar color. Maybe a little green here. Now here's where I'm taking artist liberty.
Okay, that is the uh, that is the uh, porch. And a little bit of French ultramarine blue. Burnt sienna. And let's see. If I can just make some, I'm making some small shapes here and there. I left out the railings. There's railings across the front porch. problem I have is it's really hard for me in the studio here to see my laptop screen sometimes with the finer details because of the lights the recording lights but I'll see what I can do all right so that's in some of the colors, the shadow colors, down into the fence. And again, I'll mix some uh, burnt umber and the sap green. I think there's going to be, I'm taking again, uh, Artist Liberty. I'm making some bushes here. And I'll tie those down in like that with the fence. I'll come back later with a square brush to maybe do the rest of the fence so we can do it a little faster. And we'll do some more over here. Splashes. I'm leaving white paper here and there. Some variation I try to do that all the time I'm just always thinking how can I make something a little different than just doing the same thing over and over so if I make some wide lines some thin lines that'll look better than just doing the same size line for the fence so the fence has a little bit of the lights shining uh, in the front of this scene more or less so the light will be shining on this white picket fence and let's Make that fence interesting. Let's not just get into the habit of saying, okay, it all looks the same. Let me just go one, two, three, and just go, you know, down 50, 50, 50, 60, 70, 80, all the way, you know, across. Let's, let's vary everything. Some of them, maybe it's going to be white, um, white fence without any lines in it at all in certain locations, maybe a little bit here and there. So let's see how it goes. Again, just think variation to yourself when you're doing watercolors. It really helps. Does that make sense? I'll take some red, cadmium red. Alizarin Crimson, a little bit of purple, a little 
bit of cobalt blue. And I'll try to just get some of that, some of the uh, red, reddish uh, hues in the fence too, to, in, in essence, uh, harmonize it with the building. So I will put a little bit of red colors those, um, that we used on the building in some of these greens and grays that we're doing in the front. This is a marathon of a painting, um, <clears throat> but I definitely wanted to do this. This is exciting. This is an antique shop in the countryside. It's, you know, just the feeling of being out shopping and, and having fun out in the countryside, relaxing on vacation. That whole feeling is great. So let's, we're going for it here, going for the gusto and uh, let's take another break. Um, we'll continue by adding this field over here in between these two buildings. That's really gonna look great, you'll see. As well, we might even take some of this and put it in a window that really will, and some blue sky in maybe a window or two here. If you do that, you're really gonna, it's gonna take the painting to a whole new level. Let's see if we can do that successfully. If it's gonna work, we'll, we'll try it anyway. We're experimenting here as we go. All right, everybody, we'll be right back just to take another break. Okay, we are back. I took a break. Take breaks, everybody. Take lots of breaks, especially on a painting like this. If you're going to tackle this painting, this might be one you leave on the side, taped down to your board or your foam board or your masonite board, and you know you work on it maybe all week. You do like an hour here and there, half an hour here and there, 20 minutes here and there, and uh, you know, as long as you have uh, my finished painting to work from, you'll kind of have the feel of how it's going to look and, and what you'll be needing to do as you paint. So again, I, I say this a lot, you'll, you know, if you're regulars to my channel, you'll know um, that I always mention that it's good to paint from actually watercolor paintings versus trying to take a photograph and paint from a photograph. That's great, but if you're sort of like anywhere between like one in, f one in five years of painting, you, you know, you're, you're probably best trying to work from finished uh, watercolor paintings because You'll, you'll be seeing what you actually have to um, try to replicate um, in your painting. If you're looking at a photograph, then you're sort of like, you don't, you're looking at the photograph and you're saying, how am I gonna translate that into the painting? So um, that's just a great thing to remember, if you can remember that. If not, don't worry about it. I say paint everything. And uh, let's keep going here. So we kind of saw how we um, we got the main three buildings done. This main beautiful curtains and lace antique shop in the beautiful Pennsylvania, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And then we have another shop next door. People come here, they shop, they walk out, they go down the block, down the street on the sidewalk, they go in here. There's uh, across from this, there's a huge food market. That's the uh, Burden Hand Food Market. And then over here, there's another building. This is another uh, antique shop over here. And um, that gives us a nice, uh, interesting thing to uh, sort of observe on the side of the painting. And um, once we get some details in on this, this will be another interesting thing our eye can go over and look at. And this is the main focal point here. And um, we'll continue uh, painting. Let's get this over here. So let's transfer uh, this distant field, that distant field line. Let's let's transfer it over to the other side. This is something we definitely want to make sure we get uh, level across the picture. Other things you can sometimes, it's not so important, but this is really important to get this line level across the picture because it'll look much better. It, it'll, the painting will look so much better if we can do that. 
I might even just drop it down a little bit. No one will notice that. So we can get the mountain in here and a little bit of sky color. Okay, so then now we're going to continue with our same washes we were using. Maybe I'll, I'll just clean up the palette a little bit, this here. And we'll go in and we'll get our uh, cadmium lemon yellow, sap green, yellow ochre. And there we have our colors. So I'll, I'll dab on some paint. And then just use that paint and sort of work it upwards and uh, it's more yellow ochre toward the top and I'll rinse my brush off and dry it on my apron you can use a tissue so I'll rinse my brush off tap some water off on the tissue and then just go in and sort of We can go over here. Add a little more yellow ochre here. Did the same thing again. Rinse off the brush, dry off a little. Cadmium yellow, lemon yellow, cadmium lemon yellow there, a little bit of green. Then we still have Okay, so we we did a lot here. We got our distant fields. Um, we got our porch, the bottom of our porch, that line, that shadow under the porch, which ma makes the top of the porch boards appear as we do that shadow line. And then we just filled in some fun shapes here and there just to give this some interesting shapes in between the fence and the uh, porch in the front of the uh, antique shop and we can add some more we'll add some more details into here but for right now that looks pretty good um, I think we can do the uh, mountains let's do the distant mountains that's going to be purple and maybe some cerulean blue Maybe some raw umber. Okay, so that's, uh, I dry off my brush a little bit. Pick up some of that purple. And I'm gonna paint above above that just in case the paper is wet there I'm gonna paint above it and 
and actually when I paint above it, it creates another another mountain range. So that looks good. So I'll leave that as it is. And the same here. Maybe a little bit of a... Uh, I just put in a little bit of uh, raw umber. It might look interesting too to put a dark line, like some pine trees or something along this once this dries. We might try that. I think that might look good. It'll really, uh, might look good. We'll, we'll, we'll see about that. Again, we'll, we'll work as we go and take our time. And if we have a good idea, we put it on the back burner and say, hmm, maybe I'll do that. But we won't do it quite yet. Paper's still wet. We just did our mountain range here with the purple and the blue. Definitely we don't want to start going in and doing anything else to this. So it's usually you have to work in you know sections or you work around the painting. We always do that here. Uh, we work around our painting, let things dry, come back. And um, right now our mountain range is drying, that purple and blue. Let's let that dry and then maybe we'll do something more in between that mountain range and the fields. But for right now we can move on. We'll do a little more um, details maybe to the windows. So I'm going to look at the windows. I might get a um, smaller brush. I have a smaller brush somewhere. Here we go. So I have a little bit of a smaller brush here. Um, before I do that, let me put the shadow in. So I'll use the number six Raphael again. We'll do our shadowing. It's pretty dark. So we're going to go with um, French Ultramarine Blue, Purple, Burnt Sienna to get a little warmth to it, some Raw Umber too up here just to and we'll I'll skip a spot or two. Shadows are darker on the red. So the, the darker shadow is going to be on the red. And then across the white portions of the window, that becomes lighter shadow. So we'll do the darker first, and the same thing down here, shadow is much more um, dark under here, so I'm noticing that the dark shadow goes to about here. We'll keep it true to the picture. This is really fun. When you're doing the shadow, shadows, it's great. You just have a great time with this. Raw Sienna. Add some warm spots here and there, maybe some red. The red's already on there, so on the uh, actual siding itself, so we don't have to worry about adding red, but definitely we're working the, we're gonna have the mineral violet and the French ultramarine blue and the raw umber. That's. We're going to have that for sure on the main dark shadow, and then we're going to put a... I'll make sure my shadow goes across here. Now what happened was I noticed when I was looking at my picture that the shadow
There we go. So I just took some paper towel, folded it in a, sh a sharp point like this to lift it, just because I, I went over an area where that wasn't in shadow. I have my paper towels and tissues on hand right next to me at all times when I paint. And purple, French ultramarine blue, raw umber. So that's burnt umber and French ultramarine blue and purple. All right, that really looks great. That shadow is makes makes the painting really It makes the, the light in the picture and the painting look really uh, believable and, and, and strong, like it's a really bright sunny day. So adding that dark shadow there you'll see it, it's got that great look to it. Um, over here, we will do a shadow over here. Same thing, burnt umber, I mean, uh, burnt sienna, raw umber, French ultramarine blue, purple. I use um, Windsor Newton ultramarine violet for my purple. And this works the same too. There's going to be a shadow we'll do on across the windows. Once this dries, we'll do that. If you go over a spot, you can always add some uh, titanium white later. And again, this is really coming along fantastic. Let's not get over tired and start uh, having issues. Let's take another break. We've already been working 15, 20 minutes. And again, come back and join me. Hey, if you're new here, you're watching this, you're excited, you like this, great. Please consider subscribing. Uh, also hit the notification bell. You'll know when our next video is coming out. We're usually here, we're always here once a week, every week creating new paintings, some like this, some more simple, all different subject matter, you'll notice. We do flowers, we do landscapes, we do uh, buildings and scenes like this of um, beautiful shopping scenes and countryside scenes, cityscapes. We do, uh, again, uh, boats, the whole gamut we do here. So let's uh, Come back in about 10, 15 minutes. And again, please uh, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on anything. All right, we'll be back in just a minute. 
All right, we're getting back into gear here and we're getting set to go. Um, let's get uh, started now on, I think, uh, I think we can do the uh, shadowing now across the windows. Um, let's try some cerulean blue, cobalt blue. Cerulean blue, cobalt blue, and a little bit of raw sienna. It's transparent. That's a transparent, somewhat transparent yellow. And we can uh, So I'm going to place some shadow across here with that cerulean blue, cobalt blue, and a little bit of the raw sienna. I mix a little bit at a time so that I don't uh, over uh, do it with the uh, tonal value, the, the, uh, the dark and light aspect of it. It should remain much, it should, just, you know, pretty much cool. We don't want to go uh, a little bit of a raw sienna too is okay. That's good. And I'm, t I'm just trying to maintain my focus here so I keep to the... Usually I'll start one line and then just work from there and make sure that I'm going all the way across on the same level. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we want to try to keep that same level for the shadow. That's how it is. Um, so I started here. The posts have less shadow on them because they're closer this way. So if you can imagine, this porch overhangs about six or eight feet off of the building coming out towards us. And those posts are at the edge of that roof area. So that means the light is, is um, different as far as the shadowing goes. This back wall over here has more shadow because it's underneath this roof. The posts are closer to us, and that means they're not going to have as much shadowing. Okay, that looks good. Same over here. This over here is not so critical. That's sort of a picture um, over on the side here. People will look over here that are looking at our paintings, they're gonna look over here too and go, oh, that's interesting over here, but we don't wanna put too much in, uh, information over here because this is really our main focal point here. Okay, that looks good. Now, um, I would say I'll pick up a larger brush. Um, this is a uh, number eight. I'll get some uh, fresh water. So when I do my sky, I definitely want to use fresh water. And I'm going to use a cerulean blue. The sky's going to be really mellow. Um, some... Uh, I'm going to go really light with the sky. Some cobalt blue, French ultramarine, maybe a little bit of 
uh, burnt sienna just to so we'll have a little bit of darker spots but for the most part pretty light let's go with a light sky then what I'll do is I'll just put some water on a few spots on the paper not everywhere just a few spots here and there and then we can go in and This will work our wash. And I'm not going to get too worried about the details here, just if if we go on the roof with our wash, it's probably good just to get a tissue and wipe up once we go on to the roof area, then just blot some of that water off. We don't want the roof uh, to become uh, too wet where the water starts to like flow and, and, and ruin the, the effect that we created earlier. So, um, I think if we just mix things up a little bit here and there, we have some cobalt over there, some cerulean over here. We leave some white spots, keeping it light. That looks good. And then we go with a little bit of cat orange, just a little tiny bit. I rinse off my brush, dry it off a little on the tissue, and then I just mix it in a little bit here and there. Not too much water though. And if I see a spot, okay. So now at this point, we wouldn't try to do any of the uh, limbs of the, these trees here. And these trees, so that that would be, uh, we have to wait till this 100% completely dries, the sky color. Um, we can work on the windows a little. And we can work on the fence. And I think we'll be pretty much completed, so let's, let's work on the windows a little. Windows are cerulean blue for the shadowing. And then there's some uh, raw umber we can mix in there for a little darker. A little bit of uh, French ultramarine blue, maybe. I'll do the darker first. And I'm not going to be too worried about getting every exact detail. I'm just going to uh, try to get the main uh, feel for this. I think the less careful we are, the better it's going to look. So I just get in the, that shadow, those shadows there. Then there is a little bit of a darker shadow there. Let's go with some French ultramarine blue and burnt umber. And this is...
Okay, and uh, I see a shadow along the right side here. So I'm just going to go down that way like that. And there's a couple. There's some curtains. And that that's good. Um Just doing a few very sparse uh, for the for the shutters. And so that's that's good for uh, there. And we'll do below here is and I'm just going back and looking at the picture And I'm going to mix up my darks, burnt umber, burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue. Good. Then there's a window up here. There's another window here. This is kind of painstaking, you know, that's why I take lots of breaks if I'm eventually going to probably go over a few lines like I did there, but that's not a problem. That actually looks good. It looks good when things aren't perfect anyway. And these windows are... And if you can capture that dark and light right at the shadow line there, that, that looks really good. Okay, we're uh, I think that looks good. Let's take another break. We'll come back. We'll we'll start we'll do our fence in our trees and, and that'll be that that'll be it we'll have everything completed maybe a few more details over here we can do these over here and then just maybe a couple a couple a uh, bit of windows window panes here
that's all. And uh, okay, let's come back. Just a second, I'm gonna take a 10 or 15 minute break. Okay, we're back. I took about a 10, 15 minute break. Um, let's uh, work a few details in here. Um, something I saw when I was just a couple of shadow, a couple of shadowing uh, for the for the siding here. So these are clapboard siding. All we need is a few here and there. make a couple darker so this is where we would go uh, you know a few few uh, dark um, lines here a couple light ones we'll use a little bit of um, titanium white to do a couple highlights but that's plenty enough to this is The key, the key here is to avoid uh, doing too many, just a few, in strategic locations like that. Plenty enough. Here, maybe a few, just uh, I'll just do a few like that, just so we have that feel of the... Okay, that's good. And uh, let's do our uh, trees here, so we have some raw umber. Burnt umber, raw umber, some cerulean blue. We'll make sort of a, a little bit darker mix there. So we kind of have a, a mixture of really dark, medium, and then a lighter tonal value here. And uh, not too much water. And then we'll just... Uh, I'll follow the, the lines here. So this is sort of a darker, some of the darker lines here. And I would, I would go very light. I wouldn't do too much with the, I would just, you know, a little. That looks pretty good. Maybe a few. I see some darker. Good. And I changed this around in the picture. Um, 
you might have noticed that I there was a really large pine tree next to this building here I I wanted to go with more of a lighter feel so again uh, artist artist liberty does that make sense um, when you're creating a painting you can change things around to suit the look you want in your painting you you don't have to say oh well the there's a pine tree right there I have to paint that and not really you can you can adjust your painting and paint it the way you want to paint it you're the artist right you're the creator you can create your painting the way you want to and that's how we work here That looks good sometimes to just have some of the branches. Like that. I'll put a darker shadow over here. There was a uh, some shadowing on this uh, gazebo here. I'll dry off my brush on a tissue. So I'll pick up some paint, dry off some paint and water, and then just do a couple Just so we have that feeling of some shingles on this uh, gazebo here, like that. And the same thing up here. We can always go back in and uh, do some couple lines real loosely, real quickly, not spending any, any more than a minute just to get some lines on here, just to... And then some... Couple uh, vertical lines too, like that. That's all. And some more over here, same thing. No more than 30 seconds here. Get some parallel lines. Then just a few little dash marks going uh, vertical, vertical dash marks. Like that. All right, we're almost complete. Uh, let's see, one more thing we have to do is we're gonna get our brush here, our flat brush. We'll go quicker on this. So we're gonna take um, the same colors we've been using. Cerulean blue, um, French ultramarine blue, some burnt sienna. And uh, a little bit of sap green. And we'll pick up some, we'll use our flat brush, our square brush. You can see how it's, um, has a nice chisel point on it. And we'll just quickly do these. Some blue. Then we'll go into the warmer colors, the browns and the reds, just to
Then we can take this and raw sienna. Purple. And we'll just do some So I'm just doing some shadowing along the front of the fence with some purple and raw sienna just to uh, you can blot up if you do too much that's not a big deal and then we can So I'm going to make this just a little bit of a sidewalk here. A little bit of the orange. Burr Umber. French ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, sap green. I rinse my brush off, a little bit of burnt sienna. And maybe I'll try to just do some, some shapes here. There's some shrubs here. And we'll add some uh, cadmium lemon yellow to those. And I'll do some splashing. Then we can, we'll take our titanium white, Windsor Newton titanium white. We'll add a little bit of yellow ochre to the, uh, to the, um, to the paint so that it's a little bit of a warm white. Titanium's pretty, pretty much just plain white. It doesn't have a lot of uh, hue to it. It's just white. And what, can, what we can do here is um, add a few details. Um, so I'm gonna do this. Okay, so that's on the uh, porch area and then this here too um, now also I forgot to mention there is there's a um, there's railings on this So I wanted to get in those railings, and they don't. Ha it's just a matter of putting them in, so that we see that they're there. But it, they don't have to be um, at all detailed. Or you saw how quick I did that. I just did one line across, one line across here, and then some vertical lines, haphazardly. Doesn't have to be. You know, you don't have to have a ruler to just get some vertical lines in. And some and a horizontal line for the top of the railing, and maybe in a few spots you can. <laughs> 
and I'll make a few just shapes, you know, maybe some, I'm thinking of maybe some different things that could be on here on the, uh, the porch area of like some antiques and things. And uh, here, uh, this is, I meant to do this. I went over that before. Right, I think that's plenty. Um, we could do some more details. Over here, you know, we can do some uh, darker darks. Maybe some of these areas here. Underneath the... Uh, And you could also put up a sign if you wanted to in the front. You can create your own sign. That's another thing where you can be creative and come up with your own ideas. Maybe put up a sign on the roof, on one of the roofs, upper upper roof here, or a sign on the roof over here by the door. There is a sign on the fence here. I did not put it in. I just, uh, I didn't put that in. But, you know, you can create your own ideas, too, as you uh, work on this painting. And when you're drawing it, pencil drawing it, you can add in your own sign if you want. Somewhere in the picture, you could decide where, where it might look good. But other than that, I think we're 100% complete. Let's, uh, we'll peel off the tape here and just, uh, again, you saw this painting in the beginning uh, of the video. So, but we'll... We'll just zoom in a couple minutes here. And I'm tired because we've been working on this for at least almost uh, two hours. And I worked on it last night for about another two hours. So this is a lot of work. Take your time as much time as you need to um, get the feel and the look you want. You can do it, um, you can create this painting the way you want it. You can do less details. You can do more details, it's up to you. But I hope that's really a, a good feel for this uh, location. It's a beautiful antique store, curtains and lace, and uh, out in Pennsylvania, beautiful Pennsylvania, Lancaster. Everyone, thanks again for stopping by and watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.